Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is John DeMottis, and I work at Kickstarter, uh, primarily working with the design and technology categories. Um, so it's my privilege to be talking here today. Um, I'm very thankful that I was invited, and just like a huge round of applause for like our organizers. They're amazing. Um, So Kickstarter was a thing, it was a crazy idea about five years ago that our founders had on the very simple premise that uh, people should be able to have an idea, present it to their peers, and if there was enough enthusiastic support in the world, that it should be able to come to life. And it was mainly based on this premise that everyone can make amazing things. I know it sounds a little bit like, eh, but the truth is like this like, was a very genuine emotion that was validated over the course of five years to enormous success. Um, and, you know, initially it started with, like, really simple, modest projects, like uh, I will draw for dollars that raised $35. And we've come a long way since then. Um, I did some unscientific tabulating of uh, open hardware projects on Kickstarter. I spent about uh, six hours or so going through all the technology projects that had an intent of, uh, of being open hardware and tallied them up and uh, found that we've had about 187 projects that were funded to the tune of over $15 million and backed by 170,000 people. That is astounding. It is astounding to me that, like, that, that we've been able to provide, and I'm so grateful that we've been able to provide an engine of sustainability for this community. So the question that I've been thinking about in preparation for today was, why do open hardware projects come to Kickstarter? And uh, I want to start by the premise of two of our core rules, the, the rules that govern all projects across the entire site. Now, we're very inclusive. We want everybody to make projects, but we also want to foster healthy communities of project creators and project backers. And so for project creators, we want everybody to make sure that they're creating something that they can share with others. And we also want to make sure that all their projects are being presented honestly and uh, that they're being presented honestly. Um, and to me, those two things translate to community, a word that we've heard a lot today for a good reason, and integrity, the simple notion that everything that you do should be just honest and straightforward. So when I think of community, I think of it on a few different levels, like the most tactical bare bones level sits at like the level of ecosystem, this like infrastructure level. And it's, you know, things that we're all familiar with, like the networked effect of, of building on top of the Arduino platform or being able to to like fund your 3D printing project because there's like a good group of people that like understand what that is on Kickstarter. So first you start with that layer of infrastructure. And then on top of that, when open hardware projects come to Kickstarter, what they're really able to do in terms of community is bridge a lot of gaps. They can bridge one community that's, that's basically creating just hardware to a creative culture and a creative like series of projects that they're very interested in and backers around the world are interested in. So I've chosen a few projects to kind of go through as examples and kind of reflect a little bit on like how that open source hardware project is bridging to a different community. So the touch board by the Bare Bones folks in London uh, is really, it's a really amazing board. It's built on Arduino and it's able to, to use uh, capacitive sensing with their uh, conductive ink to create like really fun interactive projects. Now, Matt Jones, Matt and his company uh, make a conductive ink. They don't make electronics, but the ability to build on, on an existing platform, which was an existing community of developers, meant that they could create a platform that would allow their larger community to like really like create fun, cool things. So they were bridging uh, a community of open electronics with a community that just want to create like fun, cool stuff. Then there's the UARM, which was actually referenced uh, in an earlier presentation as well. Um, this is from a team based in Shenzhen, and they made a, like a really fun kind of like cool uh, like uh, open source, uh, open hardware uh, industrial robotic arm. And the reason I really like this and I'm referencing it is because they're based in Shenzhen, but the majority of their backers are based are, are coming from all around the world, and they were able to use open hardware as kind of this universal language to speak to everybody and say, this is what I'm making. It's based on Arduino. These are the laser cut. Like, this is what the laser cut files are going to be like when we release them, and we're very successful in funding their project. And Brick, which might not necessarily be an open, hard, open hardware project, but is being developed by a group of open software developers very much in an open, in an open fashion, and 
they're using like these like core principles of open of uh, of, of open source software development to kind of uh, open up their th this project to uh, for for social good. So they're they're based out of Kenya, and uh, the, their primary um, the primary work that they do is for Ushahidi. But they're able to kind of use this work to to extend themselves uh, beyond the beyond what what they've done so far. Of course, there's MakerBeam, which was Actually, not electronics, but a very early open hardware project, all the way in 2009. Um, and I've like since they funded, it's like a simple T-slot aluminum system. Uh, since they funded, I've seen other projects use it as like infrastructure, like for 3D printers to to fund uh, to fund as well. And it, there's like a thread from 2009 all the way to 2013 from MakerBeam to the Neo Cedar, which was at the summit last year. And what I really love about what uh, Golan and Pablo did with this is that they started out by saying, we want to make this thing, we want to make it in a large volume for a lot of people. They had an educational impetus like pushing them forward. And they used the principles of, of, of open hardware to be able to say, this is going to provide us continuity going forward, which was really important for them as, like, as a mission, but also like, knowing that like, their work would have like, a life beyond the campaign. So this is, this is an interesting little premise that I want you guys to think about. You have all these different people creating open hardware in like coming up either from electronics, building on platforms, using it for photography, using it for, for various like fields that are technical in nature. Meanwhile, in other places in, on Kickstarter, there's like all these tiny little things happening and it's mainly amateur makers. So they're making pens, they're making wallets, they're making bottle openers. These are tiny little things that they're first kind of foray into making something for like a large group of people. And they're very excited about it. And I can tell you that every day when I look at these projects, when they start, when, when folks on Kickstarter, when creators start talking about how they made something and why they made something, I can see the influence of open hardware seeping into these other little tiny categories. And that's a really big deal. Because fundamentally, at the end of the day, the money that you raise is going to get spent, whether it's on parts, whether it's on shipping, whether it's on packaging, it is going to get spent. After it's all said and done, a year, two years, three years after the campaign, this is what's gonna matter. The fact that you've built a community of users or a community of, of people that really love what you've done and will follow you to the next project, they'll follow you and like, be interested in what you're doing. So the other part was integrity. Now, this is an interesting one, because when I think of the open hardware community, I think of things like prototyping, I think of things like CAD drawing, schematics, either like the fundamental principles that like you can read in the licenses around this stuff, right? Now, on Kickstarter, when somebody comes to the hardware project, we have an expectation that, that they'll be able to, to show a prototype of what they're making and how it works. And there's also like a bunch of best practices that live kind of underneath that, which is you know, talk a little bit about, about your project timeline. Talk a little bit about who you are, what you've done before. Do you, have a, do you have a GitHub link? You should probably share that. These are best practices. What's interesting is that what's best practices for everybody else on Kickstarter is fundamentally just like built into how open hardware works. It's who everybody in this room is and, and how you carry yourselves in the world. So a few projects to kind of like use as examples. Pixie was a very, very precise GPS board. When they launched on Kickstarter, they already had all their schematics online, which is really useful if you need to validate like, the, the, the hard work that goes into something like this. So if you're, if you're a serious uh, developer that wants to use the Pixie board while the campaign was still alive, you were able to like, look all through, through all their schematics, understand what parts they're using, understand how you would be able to integrate it into your own work. Oh, I love this. Uh, uh, Arcbotics did Hexi the Hexabot. And again, while the project was live, uh, Connie released like, all the files and said, you can start playing with this right now. Here are the SCLs if you want to 3D print this. Here are the DXF files if you want to laser cut it. If you have the parts, you can just build this right now while the Kickstarter is live, which is really interesting. It's interesting that she's raising funds to bring this project to life, but at the same time, she's telling you, you can start playing with it right now. You don't even have to do that. If you have the parts and the understanding, just go for it. And the last one is Infogram. I think this is the second or third time, possibly, that Puppet Labs has been mentioned in presentations today, and for really good reason. They are, they're a stellar group that really puts forth like, all, of their, all of their work in, in an exemplary fashion. 
What I specifically wanted to mention was that they do a great job of like referencing the path that they took to get to where they are. They show really early prototypes. They show like the middling prototypes of like how they overcame a constraint, and that all very much informs like with a with a sense of like of, of transparency of like what's going on. How did you get to where you are? When I was thinking about this, I was like, oh, transparency. That's a word that we use at the office a lot about like what we expect out of. Out of, a, out of a good hardware project. And I was looking at the open hardware site and I realized that, that word doesn't even exist on the site because it's like just what you do. Like it's, it's it, talking about who you are and why you do it and, and, and how you got there and what the files are, that's built into this culture and this community. And I firmly believe that by extension, this whole, this, this whole community is acting as, as a backbone and as a leader. Everybody looks to see like, how are the open hardware folks doing it because They've already got it figured out in some sense, right? This is my favorite picture that I always kind of like to finish on. Every time that I go to a Maker Faire now, there's like a really good moment where anybody who's done a Kickstarter project kind of gets together and we take a family photo. And I was thinking about it in connection to this talk, and I realized that like a good portion of the creators that I run into now at, at Maker Faires are working on open hardware projects. This is the last thing that I want to leave you guys with. This came up three weeks ago from a creator, and it just, it makes me think of everybody in the room. It makes me think that um, when people are creating projects and putting them on Kickstarter, for me, it's a moment in which you're putting yourselves forward, you're sharing something with the world, and you're saying, I want to be able to look you in the eye and bring it forward and make it a reality. So I'll leave you with that. Thanks a lot. <laughs>